friends, and welcome back to 20 Questions With. For those of you who are new here, this is my fun way of introducing you to new costumers and costumers by asking them 20 silly questions. Today, we are talking to the one and only Angela Clayton. Welcome to my channel, Angela. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Most people seem to be, and I think that's funny. It's probably because you haven't watched me be like absurd in all of them. Angela is one of the few people who managed to abstain from watching. I haven't cheated. So if my answers are worse than other people, it's because they're cheaters and I'm genuine. That is true. Yeah. Uh, for the four people out there who have not heard of Angela Clayton, can you tell us about a little bit about yourself and your channel? I make costumes, mostly historical costumes, sometimes fantasy-ish costumes along with vintage clothing. And I film the process and I share it on YouTube and I share it on Instagram over under my username, Angela Costumery. And I've been doing it for many years now. And yeah, also Angela, I like dogs. Yeah, Angela likes dogs a lot. But she's also one of the OGest of all Coztubers. Like, I think you might be the first one. Like, it's completely possible. It, it's been a long time. Yeah. It's been a really long time. Do you want to tell them about your, your side venture in pattern selling? And in my spare time, I like to sell vintage patterns. I've sold like a thousand in the past year. And I also design patterns for McCall's. So I have some historically inspired designs with them. Yeah, whenever I go to the Joanne and I pull out the McCall's book to be looking through stuff, I'm like, oh, these are my friends. I get so excited. I'm like uh, Elf, that guy, uh, whoever Elf was in Elf. And I'm like, Santa, oh my God, I know him. <laughs> I get super excited. <laughs> like, yeah. look at my friends are in this book in a pattern store. <laughs> It's, it's very weird because I go there and I'm like just going about my day buying stuff. It's like, I'm in a book here. Mm -hmm. I know that the people around me know it. Sometimes you're on a display and that's even weirder. I don't think I've ever seen a display. I've seen one display with a bunch of like costumers on it and you are on the display. And I was like, whoa. I think the Joannes around me are crappy and they don't have any displays. Uh, does Yaya Han do for McCall's also? Yeah. Yes. She yeah, she's she was on the display too. So yeah. Okay. Are you ready to play 20 questions? I am. All right. I'm going to win. <laughs> you are going to win. I actually have faith in you. What is the weirdest thing you've ever had to do for a job? Probably just photographing costumes in like really weird places. Uh -huh. Like I mean, there's this church that has beautiful grounds. So just like, actually, I know what it was. So for one of my McCall's projects, we went to a church to take photos and we went really early. So no one was there and we had permission. And then halfway through the photo shoot, these people came in and were discussing renovations for the church. And I'm just like sitting there in a Renaissance costume in the pews <laughs> with my dad. And it's like awkward. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to own a dog kennel, like a from home dog kennel. So mm -hmm. like you could take care of the dogs while people were away, but it'd be run out of your house. And then as I got older, I realized I don't have as much patience for other people's dogs as I do yeah. for my dogs. Uh -huh. and I'm also not a big fan of the fluids that dogs excrete. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I have more tolerance for those coming from my dogs as well. So that, that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. My husband and I have a deal where I deal with input and he deals with output for the cats. <laughs> so anything that comes out of a cat, that's on I him. feel like you quite literally got the good end of the deal there. <laughs> I really did. It's really funny though, because if he's like out of the house and I don't want to look at it, I will just walk around the house putting like paper towels on stuff. <laughs> and I he think comes you've home. told me that before and I just imagine your husband coming home from like a business trip and there being towels <laughs> everywhere on the ground like it's just a sea of paper towel islands of cap on it yeah kind of yeah yeah actually welcome home honey <laughs> I don't do it if he's on vacation but I if he's out for like all day and they are having a particularly pukey day because there's seven of them so if if they like are in it one day sometimes they said each I don't know anyway so yeah there'll be a bunch of paper towels <laughs> I, I'm that person that I'm like cleaning up dog vomit with one hand and trying to prevent myself from vomiting with the other mm -hmm. it's like it's great <laughs> yeah that's my problem actually because I'm a sympathetic cooker so and then there's just more for you to clean up it's yeah an endless cycle <laughs> yes it, it's gross <laughs> moving right along <laughs> if you could trade places with any other person for a week famous or not living or dead real or fictional whom would it be 
see, I'm too much of an overthinker. So that just makes me anxious. Cause it's like, what if someone realized I was a different person? And what if something happened to whoever wasn't like had taken over my body? Would they be able to take care of my dogs? What if they were married? What would their partner think? Is that like consensual? Like it just, I, I can't do questions like that. They just like my, make my brain go crazy. <laughs> I hadn't really considered it from that perspective but yeah I also like how you focused on what happens to your body and your dog and not like the very famous person in a pivotal piece of history that you might be affecting <laughs> but, like that just makes it more that just makes it worse like <laughs> it does. that's so much pressure to put on yourself if you're like taking over someone else's life yeah that's true <laughs> If you could learn one skill in the world without trying, like matrix style learning, what would you pick? Play an instrument, like piano or violin. Mm -hmm. I just am not musically talented and not willing to put in the work to become musically talented. So that would be a great skill to magically acquire. Yeah, for sure. Also, then you could do your own soundtrack behind your own videos. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. 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 And then royalty free music would be fantastic. Wonderful. What's something that a lot of people are missing out on because they don't know about it? Okay, my like gut reaction is period panties. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those are a game changer, I will say. <laughs> I gotta say they've made my life a lot better. Yeah, mm-hmm, same. I don't know if I want that to be my answer though. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna think about it for a few? <laughs> no, I feel like that's a good answer. <laughs> Thanks, I think it's a great answer. Brief. They're great. Changed my life. <laughs> it's not as gross as you think it would be. It's not as gross as you think it would be. I thought it was going to be super gross and I tried it largely because you said something about it. And I was like, all right, if Angela says it's cool, I'll do it. And then I tried it and I was like, oh, this is great, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I love how my range of answers goes from period panties to beans. <laughs> Dom Zala mode said beans <laughs> I disagree with that but <laughs> okay they'll feel like I'm winning if that was one of the answers <laughs> I feel like you are also uh if you could choose your dreams what would you prefer to dream about see this is another one that's hard because I wouldn't want the dream to be so great that like life would suck by comparison yeah but I also wouldn't want it to be bad either mm-hmm you know, I'd probably rather just not dream at all because whenever I have really involved dreams, I wake up just feeling exhausted. Like I've already gone through the day while I was asleep and now uh -huh. I don't have to deal with it again. Yeah. So like just peaceful sleep. That, that's what I take over dreams. They say the most peaceful sleep is when you get through your entire dream because when you, when you remember your dreams, it's because you woke up in the middle of one. If you got all the way through it, you wouldn't, remember it like apparently you dream like whatever six times for four or five times a night or something and you only usually remember one of them and it's because you wake you woke up in the middle of that one then I stand by my answer because I wouldn't remember them if yeah. I slept through them so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the dream was about and if I woke up in the middle of it then I'd feel exhausted I would dream about Keanu <laughs> the cat or the person the person <laughs> In your opinion, what is the most amazing animal? Oh, dogs. Yeah, why? I just love dogs. How can you not love dogs? <laughs> you did state that from the very beginning. <laughs> I did, I stand by it. Yeah, yeah, your dogs are particularly great too. So that's pretty awesome. I do also really like rabbits, but they're kind of ridiculous animals. Mm -hmm. Like you can't travel with them because sometimes the noise of the vehicle will scare them to death. So I don't feel like giving them that much praise, even though they are very, very cute. And I would like to have one someday. How do you take them to the vet? A lot of times they recommend that you have two rabbits so they uh -huh. can like calm each other down in stressful uh -huh. situations, but you can also like freak the rabbit out by introducing it to a new rabbit. So it's, it's a lot. Wow. I had no idea that rabbit. They're fragile animals. Husbandry was so hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you were a potato, what way would you like to be cooked? This is one of my favorite questions. They're all bad, aren't they? <laughs> I, 
I guess mashed because either you're being slowly heated to death in an oven or slowly boiled to death and both would suck, but at least mashed potatoes are delicious. Wow, you went dark. Most people are like, I want to be this kind of potato because those are delicious. <laughs> well, I got there in the end, but you yeah. got you got the steps to get there. Yeah, okay. Put yourself in the potato skin. <laughs> <laughs> at least you're warm because you got a jacket. <laughs> Have you ever had an imaginary friend? I don't think so. I have more clear memories of my brother having an imaginary friend than me myself ever having one. Okay. Do you know about his his imaginary friend? Do you know anything about him? I think he made it up to make our parents feel bad for not playing with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had a whole bunch and I had indoor friends and outdoor friends and they That's didn't awesome. mingle. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't figure out if they didn't like each other so they didn't mingle or that's just not where they were. I'm going to go with that's just not where they were. That's really interesting that they had their own spaces, even though they were inside your head. That's really neat. I also spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house because my mom was a nurse when I was little. And so she would drop me off at their house before school. And then I would stay at their house after school a lot. And I had different imaginary friends at my grandparents' house because they lived there. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. I feel like what would happen if you went on vacation? Would you meet new imaginary friends wherever you're visiting? I would suspect so. Wow. I mean, I'm sure I had one for the plane. (laughs) Because I don't, I'm not into the plane. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. How superstitious are you? I'd say I'm a very logical person. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in a lot of it. But why would you open an umbrella indoors when you could do it outdoors? (laughs) Just saying. Like, it's not that I believe it. It's just that I don't want to test it. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. in case. You're, yeah. you're superstition agnostic. Yeah. All right. What book or movie do you wish you could experience again for the first time? Probably How to Train Your Dragon. The oh, first wow. One. That's a good one. It's pretty much my favorite movie. I love that series of movies. Yeah. And the first time I watched it, my brother was like, I saw this and it was pretty decent. And I did not have high expectations for it at all. <laughs> Okay. So I wish I could watch that again and like actually watch it, not be on my computer being like, oh, this is sort of cool. (laughs) That's cool. I love that series. That's a really great series. Do you watch the TV show? I've watched part of it on Netflix. It's fine. I wasn't as big of a fan of it. It's fine. (laughs) But I, um, I still listen to the soundtrack for the movies when I'm writing voiceovers because it's just like, I don't know, it makes me feel good, but it's also not distracting. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great soundtrack. Also, I hadn't really considered that. Huh. Okay. What is the best conspiracy theory that you know? See, the problem with conspiracy theories is that they're fun until people take them too seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're just sort of sad. Yeah. I mean, Roswell never stops being fun. I guess my favorite conspiracy theory is that the government made up conspiracy theories. Oh. Popularized them. Uh-huh. to hide their wrongdoings and make them seem as if they're made up. Yeah. So that all conspiracies are a conspiracy. Yeah. Wow. That got like meta super fast. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You can have an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life. What is it? Sushi, scotch tape, etc. You cannot have money. Oh, I thought it was just going to be between sushi and scotch tape. It's like, no. easy answer here. <laughs> scotch <laughs> tape is expensive. Does it have to be the exact same thing? Or could you have like different colors of scotch tape? Let's just say, yeah, you can have different colors if you want. As long as it's the same like base product. Having unlimited amounts of fabric would be really convenient. Yep. And, and save quite a bit of an expense. Having an unlimited supply of 1940s patterns would be great for that little side hustle. (laughs) Yeah. Because finding those is hard. And I think both of those would end up being like more convenient. Well, actually, if it's the same base thing, then I guess food. That would be the the most practical. Yeah. That's like one of my, when I was thinking about it, what I would answer is food. Because it's like, oh, well, then I wouldn't ever have to worry about that again. But I was thinking like dog food because that's like all the same product, but I wasn't sure if food as a whole was too vast of a category. I feel like food as a whole is probably too vast. I feel like that's- And I'm sticking to fabric or vintage pattern. Okay. If you have to pick what type of fabric? 
Silk, I guess. All right. Silk. Yeah, silk's a good answer. Uh, my actual choice was diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That works too. Yeah, you yeah. said, how about gold bars? Like, it can't be money, but... Yep. It can be gold bars. <laughs> okay. If you could hang out with any cartoon character, who would you choose and why? I expect this to be a pony. I have not actually watched My Little Pony. I've seen one episode. Okay. Wait, what are all those little things you have in your room? Aren't those My Little Ponies? Uh -oh. No. I'm going to get a talking to you right now. They're Tokidoki, Unicornos, and Murmurcornos, and they are not at all related to My Little Pony. <laughs> okay. Rude. <laughs> Do you, have a picture? <laughs> Do you have a picture of those and I'll put it on screen for people? I can send you one. Okay. Or I can go get one. All right. This is what these things look like. I had no idea. She has a gajillion of them on that thing that's behind her there that I'm pointing at. Yeah. Thank I don't have know. a gajillion. I have less than 200 <laughs> and more than 100. <laughs> and a uh, designer holder for them because they have to be in their little pen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A custom made shelving unit for them. Yeah. I feel like, can you hear Posey chewing on her bone? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Do you want me to take <laughs> it away from her? No. Are you sure? I yeah, feel bad. I'll just, no, I'll just be like, hey, that's Posey. Okay. Um, I think going on the fact that I love dogs and my childhood favorite, it would probably have to be Scooby. Yeah, Scooby's solid, my answer too. Scooby yeah. seems like fun. If you could commit any crime and get away with it, what would you choose and why? It would probably relate to when this is going up, our former president. <laughs> that was my answer. Also, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> we have we have very similar answers to many things, Angela. <laughs> Good taste when it comes to murder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't put anything you don't want to be uh, tracked by the NSA on the YouTube's. Okay. Good taste in something that isn't illegal actions towards the previous <laughs> president of the United States. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, I'm going to qualify this one a lot because people have a hard time with it, but I feel like you, you've got this one. The zombie apocalypse is coming. What three items do you grab? People, pets, anything living is not an item. My answer is really morbid. Yeah. Give it I to don't me. want to live if it's a zombie apocalypse. That uh -huh. sounds so scary. Yeah, I'm same. Actually. So like a bottle of pills, I don't know. <laughs> My answer is that I would run towards the zombies because I think being a zombie would be fun. Oh, see, I feel like that's a bad way to go. Why? Being, being eaten live? You don't get eaten, you get bitten. It's different. I bite all the time. It's fine. It's like <laughs> a gross bite, though. It is a gross bite, but when you're done, you don't care because you're a zombie. Yeah, but I don't want to be a zombie. But is it like The Walking Dead where if you die in the universe, you're already infected? I have no idea. Okay. People keep asking me like slow zombies or fast zombies stuff like I'm like I it's a zombie apocalypse you don't know yet. That's true. I I don't know what I would grab. I would be more like focused on panicking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd be very stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is the best item that you have purchased during COVID? It's not going to be period panties again. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a lame one, but it's next to me so I'm going with it. It's a giant water bottle. Whoa, that's massive. It's that match my sewing room. And the reason I love this is because for many years, I would go downstairs and I'd bring glasses of water up here and I'd put them on my table and I would knock them off my table and all over the floor and all underneath the table. And I previously had a rug here. So then the rug would get wet and I'd have to like roll the rug into my bathroom. And I was going up and downstairs numerous times a day, which is just a necessary amount of exercise to get water. And then I bought this and it stays cold all day and it's enough water for like two days and it's great and it's cute. It so is cute. That <laughs> was massive. That was a purchase that I made and was like, why did you not buy this four years ago? Mm -hmm. Do you have to like two-handed that thing up? Uh depends how full it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like drinking out of one of those like bottles that they bring to the office, you know, the giant ones that go in the glug glug. Yeah. yeah. They make ones twice that size, but they didn't come in cute colors. Oh, okay. Well, so, also that would be difficult to lift. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like, do you, do you know what Carlo Rossi is? No. 
it's this type of wine and it comes in a giant jug with like a little tiny ring handle that you can stick your finger through to carry it. But Carlo Rossi is massive. And when you're in college, you, you stick your finger through it and you hoist it onto your shoulder and then you drink it like this because it's the only way you can lift the bottle. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a little like that. Yeah. Name one cool feature you would add to your dream house. See, I want to say moat just based off of the coolness, but I feel like that would be impractical to keep up with. Why? You get a gator, you stick it in the moat, like it'll take care of itself. I don't want a gator moat though. Oh, okay. I want like something that can't come out of the moat. I want it full of like sharks. Oh, hey. With, like, so maintaining a saltwater moat. What if it just handles itself? Then I'd go for moat. That'd be super yeah. cool. All right. If it doesn't handle itself, what is your feature? I'd really like like a third floor loft where it's just like this giant Ooh. open, well lit space that could be yeah. my sewing room. That'd be great. Yeah. Because looking good. at houses, it's like these all have rooms and that's so inconvenient for the quantity of stuff I have. Yeah. Like one giant room. Hmm. Yeah. I would add a butler. <laughs> <laughs> would it be like attached to the house? Yeah. <laughs> like Adam's family style. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You have you just a hand. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what would this color look like? It's your dream. You can make it whatever you want. Right. It'd be uh, cute, wouldn't it? The hand thing would be awesome because it'd be like those third hand things that you can get to clamp to your table to hold your sewing while you sew it. <laughs> <laughs> you can just get thing to do it for you. You'd have the best <laughs> camera angles. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, a cameraman. That's another good one to add. Okay. <laughs> You're new and now a feature of my house, sir. <laughs> You have five minutes to hide a paperclip in your home. A detective is hired to find it, but if he fails, you will get a million dollars as a reward. Where would you hide the paperclip? Could you just swallow it? Are you in the home? I don't know. I'd like to be. I don't know what he might do to my stuff. I assume you can swallow it, but you got to also assume that he might assume that and go through. He's a detective, so. It's a good point. I feel like I could hide it in like a pattern envelope, in a box full of patterns, in a pile of boxes full of patterns. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be that hard. I think this question needs like a time limit for the detective. Like he he has to find it within a certain amount of time. Cause like anybody can find anything given enough time, right? But yeah. like, yeah. So my answer was that I would put it in the underwire in my bra. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Because then he couldn't even use like a detector to metal detect it. That's smart. But yeah. I mean, you have to be wearing a bra and that doesn't sound very comfortable. Yeah, that's true. Although if there's company over, I'm usually wearing a bra. So you get to spend one year on a deserted island with any cartoon character. That cartoon character is your only chance of survival for that year. However, after that year is over, that character will try to kill you. What cartoon character do you choose? I don't know. Is there a cartoon character that can transform into a boat? No, you're on the island. You can't get off. Oh. And I'm sure there's a transformer that can trans to transform into a boat. I have honestly no idea, but I would love to know what the right answer is. <laughs> uh, I believe it's Wiley e. Coyote. Okay. Because I he's got the smarts to get you through that year and he has failed to kill the Roadrunner every time. That's true, but is he going to be able to catch food for you if he can't even catch a roadrunner? Yeah, he's a coyote. Okay. All right. The super controversial bonus question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Yes. Why? Anything is a sandwich if it's between a piece of bread. Okay. You could put a TV remote between two pieces of bread <laughs> and it would be a sandwich. It would not be a good sandwich, but it would be a sandwich. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining me today, Angela. I will leave a list of Angela's accounts down below so that you can check her out and give her some love if you don't already follow her. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below with what you guys are up to. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye guys. Bye.